Over 40 million people in the U.S. alone suffer from anxiety-related disorders. According to the ADAA, which is Anxiety and Depression Association of America, this means that 18.1% of the adult population will experience overwhelming fear and dread associated with anxiety at some point in their life. Fear as a concept might seem like a similar sensation, but it's generally considered that anxiety is used to define an ongoing sense of disease or worry about areas of life that may not present themselves as immediately threatening. Fear is what you feel in a scary situation. A sudden jolting and deliberating reflex response. Anxiety is less noticing and ultimately can prove to be quite a bit more problematic in the way it interferes with everyday life. The impact both fear and anxiety can have on all areas of life, however, is huge. And it's not until we do a little reflection and introspection that we realize that anxiety is a compilation of fears we are unable to acknowledge and effectively express when they present themselves. But the trouble with this fight or flight reflex action in today's society is that the fears we have evolved to protect ourselves from have also evolved. Where once our ancestors were triggered to run and flight from immediate life-threatening predators. Today's reality is not quite as dangerous. Cortisone is released in everyday situations which are not life-threatening. Threatening work meetings, anticipating spending time with family, or worst of all, taking public transportation. Tell me about it. I'm, I'm from New Jersey. I live in New Jersey and the mass transit in New Jersey into New York it can be treacherous sometimes. But our, our bodies will respond to these situations in the same ways using excess amounts of energy as we enter into the protected mode. The human body hasn't yet learned to differentiate between the dangers of, say, getting hit by a car and failing an exam. Both things elicit the same response in the brain. And as such, our bodies are overstimulated and flooded with unnecessary hormones. The results, unnecessary and unhelpful levels of stress. What's the lesson here? To first forgive your body for its evolutionary assumptions. It's not your fault that these responses have become routine. The reality behind our fear responses is that we must train our mind to react differently. To notice when you feel anxious. Take an honest look at the situation and then decide if your body's reaction to its justify or not. This is the beginning of letting go of If we fear. follow the guidelines set out in the last post and acknowledge the truth of our fears, noticing them for what they really are, we can begin to differentiate between rational fears versus those which are not. Usually there be some form of sign letting you know if your reactions are escalated or not. And so it's essential to remain aware of your surroundings for this reason. Be conscious of your interactions with others during a period of so-called fear. Are you creating tension where tension is not called for? Have you created rifts or noticed a shift in the positive energy of the interactions you use to take for granted? Get curious about your fears. And if you feel comfortable to do so, ask those closest to you to help you identify common patterns. Often it's other people who notice our patterns first and so if you're really struggling to do so, difficult as it may sound, 
it can help to talk. Let me really, let me re repeat myself again when I want to let you know it can help to talk. So do not be afraid to express yourself, to speak to someone. I'm telling you, this, 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 this was me. I had to learn how to overcome expressing myself. I had to learn how to go to someone and just begin to talk to them because holding anything within is not good for your health, for your mental state. So it's, it's a good way to help your mind, your body, and your soul to reach out to someone and to talk to them. So talk to someone today, talk to a friend. The main problem is that this question often comes up during the power struggle between maintaining and releasing control of fear. Our own capacity to change is infinite and it's vital that we access this potential if we are to truly start thriving. Notice if statements such as the fathering have worn, worn their way into everyday life, everyday dialogue or everyday life. I'm not capable. I love to, but I couldn't. That's not for someone like me. I'm not able. If any of these sound familiar, you may need to change the inner dialogue that surrounds your fears. Can you relate to any of these statements? Can you relate? Because I know, I definitely can relate. I raised my hand up 100% because I'm, that was me for a very, very long time. But now I can say I am a recovery, <laughs> a recovery of myself and stepping out and doing what God has called me to do. The most important thing to consider when you're seeking to let go of any fear is to fully acknowledge it for what it is and how it has formulated in your mind. Only by familiarizing yourself with the fear, can you hope to overcome it? Our five steps to release the fear. Step one, acknowledge the fear. Step two, release the control surrounding it. Step three, decide which action can be taken to overcome it. Step four, take this action to manage lasting change or to make lasting change. Step five, put all effort, energy, and concern into creating and maintaining that change. Simply writing this down, taking an objective look at the role fear has been playing in your life is the most affecting and lasting way to make changes in how you proceed and deal with fear. It's often said that depression occurs when we living in the past and fear or anxiety occurs when we try to too hard to live and predict the future. This means that living in the now becomes an almost impossible task and a possible task which is necessary if we are to truly let go of fear. Come on, let go of fear and release ourselves from its grip for good. Through various practices like meditation, mindfulness, and other creative pursuits, you find a noticeable, a noticeable difference in the capacity you possess to stay present. Making this a priority as a more move forward in your life has also proven to be extremely useful in fighting symptoms of other mental and physical illnesses too. It's often said that depression occurs when we living in the past and fear or anxiety occurs when we try to too hard to live and predict the future. There's a this state of consciousness known as flow state, which is characterized by periods of intense focus and undistracted concentration on one specific task. Studies have shown that those who spend more time in flow state experience lower levels of anxiety and fear. And so it can be a very effective way to manage this. 
Many artists describe their most profound artistic insights as stemming from a state of flow. And it's also known to be a period of low emotional fluctuations where the areas of the brain associated with learning, happiness, and positivity are active. Conclusion. In order to experience what it's like to let go of fear and reduce anxiety, we need to spend more time and flow. Come on, we need to spend more time and flow. Stink. But what does that mean? Flow looks different for everyone. For some, it can be more obvious, creative pursuits like writing, journaling, singing, drawing, painting, etc. But these are definitely not the only ways absorbing activities such as gardening, walking, running, reading, cooking, cleaning, and even just being wholly absorbed in your work for a period of time are all ways to spend time and flow. The trick is to find what this is for How many of you are guilty of feeling a fearful silence with excited, irrational speech or actions which don't actually lend themselves to your goals? They neither fulfill your desires nor do they solve or support your fears. Sometimes sitting in silence with anxiety and fear can prove one of the most daunting tasks in the world. And this is precisely why it's so important. By allowing fear the time to settle, it becomes clear oh boy, and easily put things in place to combat it. This is an invitation to block it out and ignore it. The opposite is in fact true. Stillness forces us to deal with fears and start from a place of stable awareness to change them. Meditation is an excellent tool for this, as is mindfulness, breath awareness, or even just taking time to be by yourself in nature, or more easily put things in place to combat it. This is an invitation to block it out and ignore it. Expressing emotion does not come easy to everyone. Emotional intelligence and the language of emotions referred to becoming skillful and aware in the way that we experience and express emotions on a regular basis. How often have you heard phrases like, I'm just stressed out, or I just really, I'm just really tired, used to cover up sensations of, of fear, anxiety, and other related issues. It's one thing to use these words as an excuse, not to talk about the roots of the issue. It's another thing entirely to believe them as a fact. Becoming emotionally illiterate is vital if we are to begin to take control of our emotional state and let go of emotions that no longer serve us. Let it go. We got to learn to let it go like fear. Letting go of fear, letting go of anxiety, letting go of any uh, thing that is hindering us from pursuing and taking action. Begin, just type in the chat, let it go, let it go. Because quite often, it's not a case of emotional illiteracy, merely that many of us requires a safe space in which to express these feelings. Expressing emotion does not come easy to everyone. Emotional intelligence and the language of emotions referred to becoming skillful and aware in the way that we experience and express emotions on a regular basis. How often have you heard phrases like, I'm just stressed If you out. like to join the movement and you want to maximize your life today, if you want to connect with like-minded individuals, like myself, like you, you want to you join the movement, you want to be a part of what's going on inside of Nest Opportunity Window, um, with the daily things, the lunch and lunch, the monthly webinars, the lunch, the the, the masterminds. You want to be a part of it. Join the community. Uh, we get your 14 day trial offer so that you can begin to uh, um, dive in the, the resources that's inside the community before you have to commit. So you can take advantage of the resources inside within that 14 days. You can get a feel of what's going on. You can create your profile, all the different things that you can do inside the community before uh, you take before you commit yourself and and the growth and your growth journey and maximize your life. of 
this community, Nest Opportunity Window, we say go to www.nestopportunitywindow.com. Nestopportunitywindow.com. And I'm looking forward to seeing you inside the community, inside or at the Nest webinar or the Nest Mastermind looking or the Nest Lunch to and seeing you and connecting with you. Said, letting go truly is the only way to access unlimited contentment and satisfaction in life. What it is fear, anger, love, hate, any example of intention, emotion can be hugely impacted by cultivating the ability to let go. Letting go doesn't mean ignoring your difficult emotions. Letting go involves an integral process of looking, acknowledging, accepting, and moving through the difficulties to truly possess it and assimilate any important life lessons, you will undoubtedly learn from it. When it comes to fear, the processes might often might differ slightly from those involved in letting go of, say, unacquitted love or even greed. And each fear within this fear will vary too. Sometimes it can seem like the most reckless thing to do, but ultimately letting go helps us to cultivate a sense of inner strength in ourselves and trust in the world, which then allows for greatness to manifest outwards. Are you ready to let go? Are you ready to let go? Let's go. Let's get excited. Let's go, Asha Takers. Are you ready to let go? We will win. Today, we will become Asha Takers. Today, we will defeat fear and overcome fear and anxiety and begin to be, and begin to maximize our life and to be better individuals, being the best versions of ourselves. Because today, we will win. Today, we will become Asha Takers. Today,